What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with episode number 22 of No Labels Necessary. Now, we got a very special episode for you guys today. We are live from Tulum, Mexico. Um, we have are on a retreat of sorts mm-hmm. with a really dope team called Since the 80s. For those of y'all don't, who don't know, JIT Management. Um, Earth Gang. And Earth Gang. A lot of dope acts and some pretty, really dope people. Very, very dope people, actually. And today, on today's episode, we're going to talk about some of the things that we've come across in conversations, just natural industry conversations that we have together and give you the perspective from not only us, but I want to kind of channel some of the perspectives of some of the well-established executives that we're here with um, in terms of breaking artists, etc. But before we get into that, don't forget, our goal, we're trying to get this bad boy to a million subscribers, mm-hmm. so make sure you share it, right? Don't just watch it in your room and keep it to yourself. Share it so we can keep blowing it up, keep having dope experience like we did this week, and next th- time around, bring them on, right? People had the conversations. They like us, but they don't necessarily want to come on and just talk to anybody because it's not worth their time unless we're, we're going to give them a certain amount of views, right? So make sure you do that as well. And before we get into this last topic i mean this this first topic tuesdays and thursdays check us out youtube spotify apple music wherever you want to listen all right now the very first subject value 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 this is a conversation that's been messing artists up and they don't realize it right and i think it's a counterpoint to what has happened in the past we know artists were being taken advantage of so much historically they right? know their value yeah they, they didn't know their value didn't have one inkling of their value so we understand that there was needing to be um you know the people needed to share that hey y'all have value you have to be educated and learn hey you are worth something this is how the business works and artists should get more of the pie but in this a lot of people have gotten lost in the sauce so For example, artists are so obsessed with value, they don't understand how to judge money within a conversation. And I think a good way of starting is let's just break it down into three main points when it comes to judging your value. Okay. All right. The first point is you have to understand the difference between cost and value. Right. Mm, Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Something costs fifty dollars. All right. But what is the value of that thing? All right. Hopefully it's always more valuable than it costs. Yeah. Right. And also that value is relative. Right. Y'all just played Monopoly last night. My boy, Jacory killed it. Won, killed you know? it. My, my, my boy, Jacory killed won. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well what, what's one thing that happens in Monopoly? Right. If you got all the colors except one. Right. Shit worthless. Right. A damn near worthless. That thing is worth a lot highly valuable to you if i own that last thing yeah. to sell it to you yeah. but if you don't have any colors and you own all the other blocks what value is that thing to you yeah not so much right yeah so the cost and value not just for you but the others and i think one thing that artists escape a lot is judging and understanding the value to the per- people that they're dealing with right mm, okay and yeah. that's the hugest yeah. thing you're so protective oh man i should be getting this amount of money or i should be getting this amount of percentage or whatever whatever but you don't understand that you aren't as valuable in that machine as you might think you are right and i and, and this doesn't go just to uh your creative and your music it also goes to your a team. job yeah right anything what were you about to say so your team your team. Like, yeah, sometimes exactly. you think your, your infrastructure is like this and everybody's like, eh, we got like six of y'all. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So like that's one of the big things that I've keep I keep on encountering with different artists in different ways over the last probably like year and a half at this point. And it's just culminating to me to realize there's a huge gap in understanding that because now so many people are so afraid of, of being taken advantage of, they actually get blind to the ultimate opportunity. And the maximum value that comes out of that situation. So you can't think short term about it. It's like, oh, I need to get this right now. But you haven't actually built your your value yet. So, like, that's a a huge thing. What's the business model that you're dealing with? Here's another way it happens. Artists will do business outside of music about for their music. Let's say if I get a sync deal for a corporation. Right. 
not even not a movie. A movie's a lot of those run what five, fifteen k in many cases. Yeah, sometimes you know? yeah, yeah, five, fifteen. Unless you're good. like a like Paul a McCartney some, song, yeah, right? And yeah. you're just going to smack them over the head to get whatever you get because they yeah, really like yeah, that song, right? Yeah. Because uh, if they approach Paul McCartney or Beyonce for a specific song, it's because they really want that song. Yeah. Otherwise, they do everything they can to not you choose those songs. Yeah, they'll get somebody to make a version of it right. that's close. <laughs> right. Pay that motherfucker 3 k Exactly. Like, All right, we ducked the Beyonce fee. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So if they approach them, it's a lot of value in it because it's not even just – Oh, uh, this is a really popular song and nostalgia related to it. There's a specific reason I want this yeah. song in it. Social right? capital, probably. It's, it's something, whatever, yeah. right? So there's value in that. But again, people will go outside of the industry and not understand that there's a different standard of numbers, right? And then you come back in the industry and you don't get offered that same amount of money and don't realize, yeah, that's nice that you got that money over here. That's not how it works over here, right? Like it's like going from America to. I don't know, Ethiopia and, and be expected to get paid the same. Yeah. Like as a standard for a job or go from America to Ethiopia to Qatar to to London. Like everything is relative. Doctors don't get to get the paid the same in every market. They might get paid relative to everyone else in every market more. And I don't even that's that's true. Right. Because some people I doubt in the comp- countries we, we can look this up later. or Somebody can fact check us about this in the begin uh, below. But I don't know. Look at how much doctors make in countries where the government covers healthcare versus how much they make in like U.S. Mm, right? Okay. It's okay. Probably. You know, I would assume that that might not even be as as much. But the point is, again, your value changes in in different markets, and you have to be aware of that and understand that has nothing to do with it. People devaluing you, and you shouldn't let it blind you to the opportunity at hand especially if it's standard within what they're doing yeah right? yeah yeah and you said something too that i think is important to think about because it's something we talked about right like value has to first be created right so i think creators come into it naturally assuming that the thing is valuable and something that i remember us having yeah. a conversation about here Thanks. that really stuck with me was like and it was like, hey, bro, some shit is just worthless. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't worth nothing, right? Like, it may be valuable to you for whatever reason. It's your art. You know what I'm saying? It's your thoughts. It's your whatever. So, yeah, that's value to you. But value has to first be created. And then once the value is created, it has to be proven, right? Mm-hmm. And that goes back to what you just said. The way that you prove it, how you prove it depends on who you're talking to. You know yep. what I'm saying? And even to give, like, a personal example, I remember uh, there was the camp. Like the, you remember the campaign we did where, you know, we were talking to the manager and the artist and they wanted to run an international strategy. Mm. And then we talked to the label and the label was like, nah, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Because oh, yeah. the thing that the artist and the manager were finding value in didn't align with what the label was finding value in. He's like, hey, you building this. Just to give you all context, uh, the artist wanted to run an international strategy to sell merch. Merch was like their big focus for the year. And the label's like, hey, that's nice for y'all, but we make our money off streams. You know what I'm saying? Streams are what's valuable to us. So we're not doing things that's moving the needle on the streams to where we get paid. We're not giving y'all a motherfucking dime. You know what I'm saying? We're not, yeah. we're not putting no money into none of the strategy. And I know personally, that's when that starts to like click for me about like, oh shit, like there are different entities in the music industry that find value in different things. We get so used to speaking to like the value of the artists and what they care about yep. that you forget that there are other players in the game. You right. know what I'm saying? They all have their own unique interests and what they see as the valuable asset in the situation. Right. So the proven thing is always going to change depending on who you're talking to and who you're trying to do business with. And what might sound like a million dollar offer to you might only sound like a hundred dollar offer to me. Right. And so I think that that just comes down to like also space. Right. And and know how to go into it. But but that's how you tweak the game, man. You said what? That's how you tweak the game. Because I think a lot of people are going to hear this and think that we're just trying to self-correct them in a negative direction and haste and say you're not as worth as much. But it's multiple things in some situations no you are not worth as much in terms of a standard number that you might be thinking however in other situations you might be worth more or it might help you repackage what you're offering to approach somebody differently so you go back to the monopoly game right you're thinking about if you think about the deals that you did look different from different people yep. right mm-hmm. all right like talk just give some anecdotes from that game because I think it relates directly to this conversation. Man, 
first off, it was amazing gameplay on my part. If I if I must say so amazing myself, amazing gameplay. Very big brain thinker. Yo, EJ was first to lose. EJ was so out. Y'all can't see EJ. He's over there, but you know he was he was he was he was trashed out too. You know what I'm saying? He was the first victim. <laughs> but so it, it's like in that scenario, like I wasn't up that game. I had to start kind of surveying the landscape and saying like, okay, this player has a piece I need. She won't give it up. This player has a piece I need. He won't give it up. He's been petty. This person next to me is willing to make a deal with me that if I play it right and I can crash out this player, all this shit can start to come together, right? Mm -hmm. So now you're looking at, yo, what do you think is valuable to these people? Yo, bro, what you want for that, uh, that railroad? Uh, you paid 200 for it, but I'll give you a band in this property right now. Somebody might go like, damn, bro, you paying a band? Or it's two hundred dollar property, but I'm like, no, nah, but I'm about to make a five thousand dollar play off this shit. You know what I'm saying? If this shit connect the way I need to connect, I'm about to start crashing motherfuckers out, and it did, right? But now I'm able to get the pieces from this person and say, okay, cool. He gave me the railroad. To give you out context, I had like two railroad pieces already. This person across from me has one railroad, but she has another piece I really need. I'm like, right, I got three railroad pieces. She got one. I need that piece because if I get that piece and I crash out the person next to me, like I bankrupt them. That's just gonna start my whole run. So I'm like, hey, yo, I'm willing to give you these three railroad pieces and like 1500 or something for that one piece that you pay like 180 monopoly dollars Which for. It's extremely valuable to her because she's nowhere near having Getting, four because you got all three. She only has one. Yeah. So it's like, right. I immediately make you come up, which look, looks like a positive situation to you. Mm -hmm. You don't see the value I see in that piece because you're not thinking about, yo, I'm about to crash out EJ who next to me. If I crash out EJ, this piece is going to make a lot more sense because EJ got the other piece I need. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm looking at it like that, bro. Like, how can I play this long term game in a way where, like, one, I'm flying under the radar, somebody catches on to what the fuck I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> and then two, you know what I'm saying? I'm sitting on. On a tightrope at that point, I'm like, man, I just cashed out band here, fifteen hundred there, but I'm selling like four hundred dollars. If this shit don't work the way I think it's gonna work, bro, I'm out the game. I might be the first one out. But that shit hit. That shit hit, bro. Very big brain play. So, like, I think that's that's valuable too. Is like, you have to understand landscape one, right? Like I say, that goes back to who are you talking to, what do they care about, shit. What's the market value for people like you? Mm -hmm. and, and you said something, man. Like going back to the, I, I don't, I don't want artists to walk away from this conversation feeling like. You're on worthless, but I think it's important that everybody understands that you're probably starting at zero. Like that's just mm. that's the reality of the matter, bro. Like we yeah. started at zero, you know what I'm saying? EJ started at zero. You know what I'm saying? Like most people come into this, unless you're like, you know, what is it like a, a, a nepotism baby, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. Yeah. Or you had like a crazy job or internship. Most of us are starting at zero. So there's no shame in starting at zero. But yeah. I think there are a lot of artists who don't want to admit that. And they're like, no, I'm not zero, bro. I'm a, I'm a million dollar act. It's like, no, you're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you may feel like a million dollar act. You may be a million dollar act in the future, but right now, where you're currently at, like I said, most of them start at zero. And then you have someone that maybe they're a ten thousand dollar act, right? Yeah. Maybe they're a hundred k, maybe they're whatever. But I think it's important to be able to have like that level of self evaluation to go yes. like, okay, like what what is the value of the thing I'm trying to introduce into the marketplace? Like, what are, what are other people maybe getting, or what maybe is kind of standard around this? Let me step back and look at myself from a, a eagle eye view and say so like, yo, do I match up to that? What I want is here. And if I look at myself objectively and realistically, I'm really here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not saying you won't ever get here, but realistically here, you need to make moves like you're here, right? Like you might, going back to the Monopoly reference, you might have to make some moves that in the moment are crazy, right? Like the, the value of the thing you're trying to set up may be overpriced for your situation, but if you play the cards right and it comes together like you feel like it will, then that's 5, 10, 20x in the future. You know what yep. I'm saying? And so that's the that's the thing I don't want to get lost in people because they're like, oh, Corey called me worthless. It's like, maybe. You know what I'm saying? But it's to help you. I want you, <laughs> I want you to be better, bro. I'm not, I don't want a lot of artists about that, bro, because I see so many like, clients and just artists homies get caught up in that. And that makes me think of this quote. I don't know who said it. Somebody might know and put it in the comments. But I remember that being an artist, a, a bigger artist that was like, yo, artists get caught sort of in that so caught up in the equity thing, I want to own 100%. And like, bro, 100% of zero is zero. Yep. You know what I'm saying? If I gave you 2% of $10 million, that'd be more than your 100% of nothing. You know what I'm saying? But if you just look at pure equity, you would think the 100% thing is is the better situation. And how many artists have we met, have we talked to that put themselves in a situation that maybe didn't match what they felt like their value was going to be, but they saw it as a, as a, as a leaping pad to get themselves to that value. Hey, maybe I do go sign this unfavorable deal that, you know what I'm saying, puts me on something that I don't really want for like a year or two. 
But if I play it right, my social equity bills, right? I make more connections. I do get some money in my pocket. I'm getting out of the deal anyway. So now I can, you know, at that point, renegotiate something that I want. I hear about like major labor artists and that shit all the time, bro. Like, yo, take this shitty deal, build you up, renegotiate, you know what I'm saying? Get the equity. I think we hear so much of the horror stories of people who don't make it out of that situation, right? Because that's the popular narrative. Like, yo, XYZ artist signed a shitty deal and he, he tanked, he fell yeah. off, right? But there are a lot of those that I've heard of that have taken those things because and, and survived, and we just don't hear about that because it worked out for them. So the yeah. narrative isn't as strong to like know that they were in that situation. Or some of them, it's like by the time the narrative gets out, they're already so big or so valuable that like you don't care anymore. You you see the mm -hmm. power play and like what they did. And many it's, people want to seem so smart in the industry that they don't talk about those missteps that they made. Yeah, I give that. Or that, that there were times that they weren't getting as much as they could because yeah. they want to look like a boss. Yeah, I, I, I get that too. Like, I will give that to artists. I don't think there are enough people in the industry who say that, bro. Like, hey, I, it's almost like an internship, bro. Like, you know, like the internship conversation we had, like, as an employee, you know, if you did that same job, maybe you are worth 90K a year, but you have no experience. You bring no real value to You're the worth organization. nothing You're to worth, me. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, hey, you got to get in here, prove that to me, and then when you up, now I see your value and, hey, this is a 90K role, but I'm willing to give you 120K. Here, let me say something back. Cause, and this isn't just about artists, because there's so many you know people that we rock with and tell us that we listen that aren't artists, right? Managers, yeah. people, who, marketers, whatever. And I actually have another value crazy story is, too. If you look, all right, the way you have to think about your value in the music industry, especially, is not just what you do, because so many times the things that people are asking you to do can be done by somebody else. Yeah, that's right? a, that's a you, hard thing to learn. And too. you think, <laughs> oh, because I'm gonna do this, and then this is gonna bring you this kind of money, and that. It's not that. The thing that people value the most is trust. Yeah, that's one thing that people extreme have extreme value for. Because yeah, I know I can get anybody to, to do it, but I know you're gonna do it. Whenever I needed to, yeah, I, want I know you that to do I, it. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I want to see you win. Actually, yeah. I know I like you, and I want you to grow with me because I because I trust you and I like you, and we built a relationship where I know you'll also be able to manage things as they grow. Yeah, All right. So you have to be able to get in and prove that you can be a part of that system. Oh, this is somebody that I trust and and and, and create whatever needs to be created or make the deal happen that needs to happen. And oh, they're willing to and able to build their skill set and have a vision and i like them because a lot of these people are in positions where they don't have to work with somebody if they don't like them yeah you know what i mean yeah like so understand the, if your position is a commodity or not i know especially the more creative roles in the industry you think what you're doing is so unique or you know you're, you you really value your pov but especially if you're not the artist talking to your fans your pov creatively often doesn't make as big of a financial bottom line difference as you would think. Yeah. I mean, cause like, like we've had to make those decisions before. Like, you know, I don't want to say the artist's name, but you know, that was that one campaign we did once for way cheaper than we would have ever done a campaign. But we were like, hey, if we make this play right, it's going to open up so many doors. And it did, right? We got to work with a really valuable artist that as a case study has probably brought us in way more money than that artist in particular has brought us in. Mm -hmm. It opened up hella relationships for us that led to other big artist clients, right? But it's like, if, if I always think about that moment, like if I step back and I'm like, nah, this is our price, bro. Like, you know, so I'm not going to budge on this shit. Like all those doors were shut, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And maybe not completely, but you know, at least for the next couple of months, they, right. they, they kind of opened up, right? So. I always think about that. And actually, this makes me think of a, a, a story that was locked away deep in my brain, but pisses me off every time I think about it. So this was when I was managing an artist. And there was a point where we got reached out to by Adidas about a sync placement. They wanted to use one of his songs in like an Adidas commercial. It's going to be like a nationwide commercial. Like, you know what I'm saying? This was like 2000 and had to be like 16. So they was talking about running like ads on and shit, which I ain't really know too much about then, but it sounded like it was gonna be like a big campaign, you know what I'm saying, based on the way the, the lady was talking to me about it. And so in order for them to sync the song, they had to get uh, permission from all three of the creators. So the artist I was managing, the producer, and then the feature artist. I wanna say they were gonna get paid maybe like 8K a piece or something like that. Like maybe what's that, it's like 24, $25,000 budget for the whole thing. I thought it was great. My artist thought it was great. The producer thought it was great. The feature artist hits them back and is like, "Now nah, I want like 15K. And they're like, no, we're not giving you 15K, bro. We're Adidas, but we're going to get 
any artist that we fuck with. You're not the only artist that we fuck yeah, with. We're, you an know opportunity. What I'm we're giving you money and opportunity. And a look, bro. Like yeah. a look, a national campaign. And I just remember, bro, like us fighting with the artists, like, bro, like, don't do this. You know what I'm saying? Because if we don't get his permission, the whole deal fall off the table. All three parties have to agree for the, the scene. Re record the song or take nah, off the it was verse. too late. It was too late. It was already, and it was kind of moving well on like socials, yeah. well, not socials, but like DSP. So it'd have been like a whole process, but. I always think back to the situation because it ended up falling through. Like he wouldn't budge on that 15K thing. It was like, all right, fuck it. We're going to go to somebody else. Meanwhile, I, how much money was that feature artist probably making off of their music? But probably fucking nothing. Exactly. He was signed at the time. He was signed to an indie label at the time, but he had just got signed. So I'm I'm going to I'm going to shoot the shot and say not much. <laughs> maybe it probably made like a couple thousand, maybe a couple tens of thousands. But I'll be hard pressed to believe that he had made a 15K play at that point. And I remember thinking like, man, bro, like this Adidas look could be crazy because I'm thinking of the marketing aspect, but we can flip this shit, turn into a marketing campaign. You know, as a manager, I'm like, I'm finally gonna make a little bit of money, you know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. he, the artist making money. And just the look over overall, and I just remember the lady who reached out to us saying they were gonna spend like a lot of money on the ad campaign. Like she said, she if she had to guess somewhere around like maybe 500K to a million. On, the Adidas? On, yeah. See, God. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. That's the, and I know the artist wasn't thinking about that you got so you're not you're thinking about oh i want 15k instead of how much in, as an individual it's 8k for each of them instead of getting 8k i want this 7k not even thinking about they're gonna put 500k worth of visibility to your music yes bro 500k worth of visibility sick <laughs> visibility hearing your song in people's ears let alone people who actually might shazam it or whatever, whatever you own your song, yeah. right? And that ownership that comes from it. So like, and that's my problem with these people who just think in this, this, oh, I need this value and this monetary, especially at the front end, because I've been told that I'm value and I don't want to be, be ran over. Yeah. It, you trying to cheat of, me. Yeah. It, 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 it really doesn't work like that. And they have difficulty seeing the long term vision. Also understand, not understanding that, where you are at this moment, you are not as valuable as you think you yes, are bro. to that company. Like gonna, Adidas, not, look, moved on. Bro, they did. Because they, they found us on SoundCloud, man. It's like, you know, like I said, it's like 2016, bro. How many lit, you know what I'm saying, small five acts on SoundCloud were there in 2016? A lot. 500K <laughs> a, worth a, of visibility. A fucking lot, bro. And That's so, something you could have did for free. And still would have been worth it. I was willing to do it for free, bro. I remember uh, having the artist say, like, bro, like, Let's send her some other songs. Maybe like she'll fuck with it. And they're like, no, they really want this one particular song. She, I remember she's been so cool about it too, bro. She's like, he really want budge on it. And they approached y'all. Yeah, they reached out. To, they reached out. They to me. reached out to y'all. You yeah. didn't have to go. This wasn't even in your vision for potential. Anything that shit was possible. Mon yeah. Money yeah, exactly, at this time, bro. right? You already did the work. They didn't have to. They didn't actually do any additional work. Literally, just let us use this song. Let us use the song, bro. AK in your pocket. Actually, that's a great point that I didn't even think about that time. You're right, bro. We weren't even thinking about that shit. So it wasn't like it was a, a true L, you know what I'm saying? I, <laughs> I never thought it was an L. Because, like, when, yeah, but that also makes me wonder, too, if, like, that artist had the same conversation with her that I had. You know what I'm saying? I, he might not even thought to ask her those questions. Because yeah. I asked her that. I was like, yo, like, is this a nationwide campaign? Like, how much money y'all spend on advertising? She's like, well, I don't know the exact number, but I would, I'm would. i assuming it's one between, like, half a million and a million. Because that's typically what we spend on nationwide campaigns, sometimes more. So I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, oh, we definitely gotta get on this shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we need to do whatever we need to do to make this shit happen. If I had money, I might have been willing to snipe them out and make it happen. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I had to buy them out of contract to some, bro. Like, but we was broke at the time, bro. So it was, it was there was nothing we could do about it. And I remember meeting that artist like manager like years later and asking him, did he ever know about this situation? And he was like, he didn't even know that came up. That hit the artist directly. The artist never took it to the manager because I'm guessing because he didn't think it was valuable. You know what I'm saying? Because I remember telling him, he's like, bro, I did not. He's like, bro, if I knew that shit was happening, I would not have let that shit happen. I was like, it would have been nice to know you all those years ago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it would have been nice to know you in 2016, bro. But, but I, I want to go on a ledge to say, uh oh, more often than artists getting screwed over, artists screw themselves over. 100%. Like, y'all, I know it's nice to hear this marketing and propaganda of artists always being done wrong or, um, like, like, and just from the financial side, especially, but when you are in it enough and you see how artists are moving, how teams are moving, it's more artists and their teams and decision making versus oh, just money. Yeah, big scary entity trying yeah. to take advantage of you. Yeah, like, is and you get you get tricked off the block because you're you're afraid. And anybody once you start moving out of that fear or the ego of value, right? That's what it is. The fear of being screwed over and not knowing enough. 
or the ego of my value and thinking my value is more than it actually is in this particular given situation. Artists sell themselves out of a lot of good situations versus under having a big vision. And that's what I try to constantly do, right? Like I have my big vision, the thing I'm moving towards. Yes, some things might be a new opportunity, but if something comes my way that I wasn't even planning, if I can get some value from it, nice. But I'm not going to like hit somebody over the head. This is not even my main business. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now I'm trying to dominate and own 100% of some shit or, or like come off of a 100K when I wasn't even planning on this 100K. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. of course, there's situations where it makes more sense and it's related because you're setting your value and setting the tone. There's situations where it makes sense to still make sure that you might be extracting a certain amount of value. But the p- point is, have your plan because it's easier when you have your plan and know what you're moving towards to either turn down shit in general that's not towards your plan or not ruin your relationship and, just, and be able to move long term in those spaces that are outside of your your direct um you know, plan of operation that you're looking to succeed on. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll say this. Let's cut, let's cut that because we can go in so many ways. And next time we had a value conversation, I want to have it with some people on so we can just ask questions and let them break things down from their own experiences. Cause we need we we actually need to make that a constant conversation that we ask. Like yeah. do you have a story when someone didn't know their value, whether it was you or anybody else. Yeah, I, and, yeah that's a great interview and question. It'll be yeah. surprising, yeah. bro, like the stories you'll hear from that shit. Cause telling you man people kill themselves shoot themselves in the foot every single day with their decision making but next subject how to break an artist all right bro i've been waiting for this one bro like i've been waiting for this one bro <laughs> so we, we got to give context to this topic right all right so go ahead. like sean said we on this retreat we since the 80s and they had us do a really interesting team exercise last night and the exercise was they had everyone out here go around the table and write down in let's say what was like 10 steps or less I think I don't think it was a limit on the steps, but basically, how many, however many steps, how would you break an artist? Like, if you was a you know manager, label person that has vested interest in the artist, and you had your game plan on how you gonna take that person from you know whatever situation you see in your head to big star or a popping act, basically the breakthrough point. Yeah, how would you do it? And yeah, but I feel like we need to share what we put because we have really different answers. Some of yeah. them were aligned, but I feel like the way we went about it was was pretty different, which I thought was right. interesting. I think. We can go run through mine and yours quick and then get to the bigger conversation yeah. that came from it. Because it's, it's, it's more of the lesson that comes from this than anything. So my number one was music. I'm going to focus on the music, make sure that the music is right. Because um, the way I'm looking at it, I know from all the campaigns we ran, look, nothing works like good ass music. Yeah. Like, and some bad music, you <laughs> you really pushing uphill. So we want to make sure that the, the, it's, a, the, it's an artist that has some really solid music. I'm not talking about full blown development, that and production, production, which is a great thing that I, I could have thought about that, but I don't, I don't, in my personal life, I don't have that investment to just throw into an artist yeah. or, the, or the infrastructure yeah. set up. So I'm just like, I'm picking an artist. I'm going to pick an artist that has really dope music that's unknown. That's okay. I'm starting. Okay. Okay. So well, we're just going to step by step. Do your, do your number one. Yeah. So my first step was just getting the artist to believe it's possible. And so what I was coming from that is a mentality thing, right? I think before any of the other steps can really be enacted, like you gotta get that motherfucker to believe. You know what I'm saying? Show him some some tune core statements, show him some results of campaigns, right? Give him something to make them go like, oh, this is possible. Cause I think especially, okay. you know, in my head, I was thinking of a complete like ground zero rapper, like like a motherfucker I heard like rapping in the hallways. I was like, oh, you follow, you should make music and right. get popping right. See, you almost gotta sell them Mm-hmm. on the vision on the dream yeah exactly See? and that's the difference man i don't <laughs> i don't like working like with that. people who yeah. get, you gotta have it for yourself because i can't want that shit more than you so i'm i'm immediately thinking <laughs> you have to want it big you see it big i can sell someone on the vision along the way but it's gonna feel like work at some point but i but even with somebody that already sees it i like that for reaffirming yeah. the possibility yeah. and just showing them how real it is, like getting them in environments like this, like yeah. little stuff, you yeah. know what I mean? Like you said, tune court statements, whatever it is, yeah. just so they can know and um, that their dream can be real. Yeah, because it changes at every level. Like I'm sure there's an artist out there making 
a hundred K a year that if somebody come along and showed them hey, you can make ten million a year, it yeah. might completely change the way they move. Yeah. Even though they're doing well, it right. probably would change the way they're doing. So yeah, that yeah, to right. me is like first step, yeah, bro. Let them, got, let them taste what it look like. Gotta make All them believe right. it's possible. <laughs> so my number two, which I kind of pushed to they are the argument became I'm, I made two steps in one. But I said get your vision, right? You have clarity on your brand and what you want to do in the marketplace, right? Because to me, I've encountered so many artists that have good music that get confused once they start putting music out there. They want to release this song, and the next thing you know, they want to release on a totally different style. Or they don't like their fans, and they're making music that won't connect with the people that they want to connect with. But, yeah. it, it, but yeah. it's popping. Remember, we, we got one artist that he got popping with people that he didn't want to Oh yeah, like connect with, for yeah, it, right? connect with, yeah. But it was going crazy yeah. for people that he didn't like and wanted to be his fans. He was actually kind of like creeped out by them, right? But it was for that fan base, it was a it was a really good big thing. So like you have to understand like that clarity of what you want and does what you have and the approach that you're gonna take actually connect with those people, right? And then I my my pairing that was illegal apparently <laughs> was, was see the void in the marketplace. Because you can have something but present it in multiple ways, right? Okay. So, like, Justin Bieber was, like, there was a missing um, place of, like, a young kid at the time he came in, of, like, this young boy pop star, right? So there was a void in the marketplace. Yeah. If there was another guy who already existed, they might have approached it a little bit different. Like, he might have had to go a little bit left of that guy who already existed, whatever that might have looked like. So understanding, oh, there's a complete void of this now, Oh, we can go straight for these little girls' hearts, yeah. right? Make him the heart throb. There's nobody to move on this, and we need to move real fast and make sure we dominate this before it's anybody else's chance for another five years, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, wasn't that Usher that had that vision? Usher signed just be right. Oh, found Usher. Him? It was a, it was a bit of war between Usher and Justin Timberlake. Usher ended up getting them. Um, you know, you know, it was him and Scooter Braun from the get go. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right. So my number two is just make the artist look presentable across the board. And so what I was thinking about with this was like visual branding. Let's make sure the DSPs look nice and professional. Let's make sure the socials look professional. I don't think at this stage I'm necessarily looking for the artists to have like a look. I think I would be looking for them to like, actually, yes, I would. I'll be looking for them to have a look. At least a look that we could, we feel like we could translate well visually, whether that be, you know, content, hard assets and things like that. But yeah, bro, the second step for me is like, we got to make you look like somebody people want to listen to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can see that. All right. So. I think for the lads ones, we should just run through them so people can hear our vision, then we can talk about the different visions. Okay. All right. So my next step was content development, meaning, hey, we're going to help you understand how to create content that people actually are going to consume and enjoy, but it has to reflect your brand and give you that muscle. Because I look at content development today as a similar thing to music development, yeah. right? Like that has to be a muscle. And I'm not saying to have you posting three, five times a week, seven times a week. It's really just to know how to do it and communicate your brand in an experiential way online, not the post TikTok and put my music behind stuff. Right. It's a completely um, different thing. Once you know how to do that, now we're going to push your music okay? because you know how to create the music. You have the vision and you also know how to present it in the context. So let's push your music using all those elements and hopefully start to find the first hit. Then we're going to double back and do some shows because now you have some music out there to do shows with and help you build that muscle of doing a show because I'm trying to build a superstar, right? So that means you need to, you know, I mean, you don't need to today, technically, actually, to have shows. Mm. But if the ones that last, we already know that the cream of the top, uh, cream of the crop, a statement that was made by somebody very well established here who's, who's done that thing, made a lot of money in this with artists, the moment you can be identified as an entertainer, your your price goes up. Yeah. Right. It's the difference between artists and entertainers, right? Beyonce, Bruno Mars, the like, different price, right? So working on that side of the muscle, because we're thinking long term, it's not just, oh, we're trying to cap off of the music and make some money. That's nice, but it's more so for the long term. And then we're gonna get some PR so we can get you everywhere, be omnipresent. You know, you think of the ice spice type stuff. Give it about eight weeks of going hard, like you're popping up, being in a, a video collab with an influencer who's popping at the time in your space. And then we're also doing some PR campaigns around um, that influencer. But again, mostly not that not that influencer, the artist, but more from a social media standpoint. So just popping up where people get the narratives. 
whatever the narratives make sense for that artist. And then we're going to start working up on a follow-up song because in my mind, all right, we built you the, the skill sets. We got you popping. Then we, and then we develop your skill sets a little bit further um, for, through shows. And now we made you omnipresent. All right. So mm, okay. got the skills. Now you put yourself into the marketplace and launch. And now we start dominating to break the artist, not just the music. That's what the PR stuff for, the social media PR stuff was got for. Got you, okay. And then we follow up and assume that we had one song that was strong. And maybe you might have had a couple that had a nice little level of visibility. But now we're looking to find a second song to really tie shit in. Yeah, cement them. Yeah, to cement you as like you're a legit artist. Yeah. All right. And not just somebody with one song that we happen to know a lot about because you did the PR stuff. We still need to connect with music. We want to like keep going the artist route. That's how I saw it. Okay. All right. That's a, that's a solid, solid breakdown, man. Solid breakdown. Well, let me look at my next step. Oh, so my next step from that was release music, right? So like I said, in my head, this artist is complete ground zero. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm thinking of, right? So just get them to start putting music out there and really start building a catalog and, you know, having something for the fans that we ideally build to experience. After that, develop a content strategy because I'm all about the free. How can we get shit shaking with yeah. little to no money involved? And kind of like what you said, man, it's going to teach them a lot about communicating their vision to their audience um in a way that is not going anywhere <laughs> so you know I, I do think that's a very valuable skill set um my next step was find the song right so that kind of makes me think about lightning rod concept we have an agency i once heard another marketer say hey bro only take one song to get in the game and i've i've lived and died by that ever since i heard that quote yeah. you know what I'm saying? that shit just changed my life when i heard that shit so my next step would be like yo let's figure out like what the song is ideally this will come from um, the content strategy and that's kind of watching how people move on, on that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, but it might be some gut feeling. Maybe we take it to people we trust, but either way, the goal would be to find like these on the song. We about to try to push the single. Uh, after that, man, build a paid marketing funnel. All right. So this is the ads. This is the influencer strategy. This is the PR campaign. This is us building out our fan building funnel using things that we can control. That's how like I look at it. You said what? Like what? Like the ads, like the influencers, like the PR stuff that we're like, we can't really be gatekeeped out of getting it. Cause I'm looking at this oh, too. Oh, so when you're, all right. Last night I was thinking about like a paid marketing funnel, like, hey, I'm selling merch. Cause I'm going to get paid off of merch. It's a marketing funnel. You were talking about like things that base. we can pay for. Yeah. So paid mark. Okay. I got yeah. it. I got yeah. It. Like paid marketing funnel. Yeah. Right. So things that are, help grow the artist fan base that we can control, that we can't be gatekeeped out of. Advertising, right. influencers, got it. Um, things like that, right? Whatever that looks like based on the resources and, and budget at the time. Okay. Uh, set next, that would be, and this one might be kind of, uh, and then I look back on it, but I put get the artist to 100K streams with no playlist, no playlisting. I'm not including playlisting in my paid marketing funnel because I, I want to have a very clear assessment of the artist fan base and who we're talking to. I don't want nothing muddying up my data. Yep. Maybe down the line, but not, not at this point. And I'm looking at the 100K streams as building proof of concept because it's gonna it's gonna tie into my my next step. But I believe in like building proof of concept of an artist. Like let me, because every artist think they're lit and they can make it. Everybody says it about an artist they work with. Yeah, we need proof <laughs> to believe that, proof. right? Okay. Um, but like I said, my next step is now I'm gonna start looking for industry partnerships. So DSPs, uh, platforms, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, things like that. Other artists, right? trying to figure out like who their peers are and, and get them, you know what I'm saying, associated with those people or next to those people. Maybe execs, you know what I'm saying? Depending on how I feel about it. I'm not the, the most like exec chasey type of guy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But maybe, maybe for the artists, you know what I'm saying? If I feel like there's some value there. But at this point, I've already built my funnel to get the artists music fans and get them awareness in like the music space. Now I'm trying to get them industry awareness, right? And and get them in front of people and things that can help them just Why industry why fan awareness before industry awareness for you? Proof of concept still. I think a lot of, uh, uh, so the conversation we had with one of them last night changed my mind a little bit on this, but I think they're a different breed of people. Since the A's <laughs> is a different breed of people. Cause Barry was like, you know what I'm saying? He don't always feel like he need to see numbers to believe in somebody, which I think is noble and even cool to hear. Cause I, know, I haven't really heard see, that before. This goes into the latter conversation though, right? This is one self belief in that as, your, as yeah. you know, as an individual, I can make some shake. Yeah, but that also becomes from the the position. Yeah, too. 
right? You've done a certain amount of things and you have a certain amount of, uh, amount of leverage, knowledge and resources that you can see something and move on it a lot quicker and build afterward where someone at the beginning, you might need yeah. a lot more proof of concept to know that this thing is going to happen. It's like the analysts who watch NBA games and they're so focused on stats. Why? Because they don't know what that shit really looks like because yeah. they haven't really moved through the motions. They yeah. don't have the instinct for it. And that, but and what they try to discount is this instinct isn't just some woo-woo shit. My instinct got built through legitimate experience and actually seeing it from the ground level. So it might seem like, oh, I'm just making it and I'm not being scientific, but I've already gotten evidence on evidence on evidence. And I've seen the things that the numbers can't reveal, which allows people, I think, to move like that. That's what I thought about. Because the other buddy number uh, number two, yeah, you know, Zeke was like, Oh, I'm locking them down on them papers. Yeah. Like to make sure, again, on un- understanding that experience. Yeah. When I when an artist takes off, how many times do artists blow up and then leave the manager who's done all the work? Yeah. Right? Which again, going back to artist decision making is or just artists always not always assuming they're the only ones getting screwed over. Yeah, no many time have no idea how many times managers and people dealing with artists have gotten screwed over by the artists. But it, people just don't fuck with the people they don't know as much, the people behind the scenes, so it doesn't become a big story. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. never going to have an interesting campaign. Oh, Beyonce got screwed over. Oh, that's a big story. Kanye, people are interested in that. It's not going to be news that this manager from Milwaukee got screwed over that you don't know by your favorite artist. You don't even want to believe that because yeah. you love the artist too much. Yeah. Right? So artists that are never going to happen. Hear that. that shit do fucking happen. Oh, more... More yeah. often than you would love to acknowledge. And that's why I say, like, I I know those type of people exist. Because I even think about, like, Sam. Sam is like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, one A good friend of mine. He's like that. But I think once you start getting to DSP. Well, he's just, just good guy in Yeah, like, he, if he industry, believes in something, yeah. like, yeah, he's a, yeah. if he believes in something, even if they don't have the numbers, like, he'll stand behind it yeah. and try to help him out. Because I've seen him do it before um, with Taj, right, with Taj Keaton. Um, he was helping him build from ground zero. I, well, all right, before you get into your next thing, I think another – and hearing him in that same example, I think another thing that goes with that is, of course, the belief in that artist and also having a vision for what you want to build and be yeah. a part of yeah. as well. So which when we talk about recruiting team members early on, if y'all are a part of the same vision, they have a similar vision to you and what you can accomplish. That's all you can ask for as, as yeah. an artist. All right? yeah. You can't expect them to give you everything or have all the resources, but they have a similar vision. Yeah. Shoot. And that's why I say like, those people, yes, bro. For but for what I've seen with the DSPs, maybe the DSP sometimes, but the social platforms, they don't usually move like that. They no. want to see some numbers. They Not want proof of concept, right? Hey, before I give you this TikTok partnership, I want to see a quarter million crates. Yeah, right. So that's that's to me why the proof of concept building is so valuable because I do think that if you push the arts in the right way, you will come across those people who don't care. But I'm thinking about the ones that do care. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? We've been honest. So like that that's what made that my next step. Um well, so looking for industry partnerships. Oh, next step would be trying to figure out how to monetize the artists. So figuring out, yo, how can we get some money back in? This to me ties into the proof of concept conversation. Um, because I do think that more doors open for you when you can prove that the artist is making money, right? It's kind of like that last conversation we had last night where they were saying that if you can build a profitable artist, like you you lit, you know what I'm saying? Because everyone doesn't build a profitable artist. Very yeah. few people build a profitable artist. It looks like there's a lot because we see all the big dogs. But if you think about how many artists release music that are not making money, the fact that you get someone making money is seen as a very valuable thing in the music industry. Yep. Even if it's not like a crazy amount. Damn, you got your artists making 10K a month? Damn, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I know 150,000 motherfuckers that wish they was making 100,000 a month off that, right? So figuring out how to get the artists making money. And then my last step will start looking for funding. Because now I feel like we got that pipeline. We have the... We have the music fans. We have the industry awareness. Um, you know, we built proof of concept. We started monetizing the artists. Now we just need funding to like gas it and like really break them through. Mm-hmm. So that's why that to me is my last step because I wouldn't want to approach an investor personally without the other steps in place. Because it's about leverage. About you don't want to move without leverage. Yeah. See, so I think the big takeaway from all of it because there are so many other perspectives and people who approach their rollouts different than us. It came down to a couple things. One. The way you're going to go about it is based on the resources that you have in hand and your main primary skill sets and mm-hmm. experience, right? So there's that. Two, EJ went crazy 
on a very specific artist yeah. that he imagined. He's who was speed. a speed. Yeah, basically, I, yeah, <laughs> speed. That's pretty much who he built, right? It was a, a gamer, right? Streamer, culture artist that he was able to build everything around. So the specificity is going to change how you approach these artists. Most of us gave some general tenets and more framework approach of how we would approach it. But when you have a specific artist you're working with, it's actually going to change how you do it. All right. Which leads me to the ultimate point that um, Zeke mentioned. I <laughs> what both of them mentioned. Right. It was like, hey, if we knew exactly what to do, the amount of money they have be crazy. We do it every time. Right? And they've done it. All right. And he said, we'll do it every time. Never do it every time. Right. But you don't know exactly what to do for every single artist because every single artist is different where they are, their fan base. There's new things to learn, but it's more about taking those frameworks and moving on them, learning, and then learning how to navigate and feel your way through it, which is the instinctual part that can't be accounted for. That's why age, um, labels like to buy momentum that's already established because they can skip the learning phase of like who this artist is, who their fan base is, how do I learn the artist and how they move, what song's going to pop. Like that's a, that's a new thing to learn. And training, just like when you hire new employees, right, yeah. is extremely expensive. So yep. that's... Yep. That was like the big value in the conversation. Like just remembering, even from these people who have helped break multiple artists or been a part of, like you know, not just you know we talk about the Earth Gang and the and Jid, but been a, being a part of Wiz's situation. Um, Shit, Mike Dimes, that's a new act that's, that's starting to Mike push Dimes. through. Yeah, helping out with, yeah. Who else was an older one around the Wiz Khalifa stuff? I forgot. Oh, Matt Miller. Mac, Mac Miller. Yeah. Right. Been, these people have been a part of multiple situations and they're still not like, oh, there's this one step that I can run every single artist through, right? Or this one set of steps I can run every single artist through and break an artist guaranteed every time. That just is what it is. So never forget that. Now, with that being said, look, we have a couple other topics that we want to go through a little bit more quickly. Uh, Because we got to get back to enjoying our experience here um, in Tulum. This is our last day. But the team building activity, do you want? think we should go do that? Like based on the time or we can skip to to TP? No, I feel like we can see. I feel like that was was the team building activity. I feel like we can say something really. No, no, we can get deeper into that another time. Yeah, Yeah, I I think think that. All right, so we'll get into Tyler Perry. And and it's really, really short, but I think it's really powerful. So some of the individuals, individuals here had um, time working with Tyler Perry. And the biggest thing that he talked about was just his output and never seeing anything move like that, saying this man was flipping money like by 30x again and again and again to the point that he no longer had to work off his money because then he established his business, business credit and you're able to move off of loans. So you never even use your money because you get a loan and you know, guaranteed based on your system, you're going to be able to flip and make that money back. 30x over yeah, right crazy so now you can move even faster because you don't even have to use your own money right that's the beauty of it and building that momentum and having a system right so artists if you can have your own system as you build your infrastructure it allows you to move so fast over time it gets faster and faster it starts off slower because you got to worry about all these other smaller details but once the infrastructure is in play and then the money's proven and things are going you can take advantage of a lot of additional things right so is that system that he had and then also just the creative output was ridiculous like what did he say he said that sometimes they'll be shooting like five six movies and tv shows in like a week right right yeah. so you have a lot of just movies i've heard take three months six months to shoot mm. he's gonna shoot a whole season of a show or a movie in like seven days at, yeah. at times and they were like he he might shoot multiple movies and shows over three months oh, using the was, same yeah, people, right. which made me think about, I was like, oh man, that's why he has the same people in so many of the shows and yeah, movies and stuff there. like that. Because, hey, they're already here. I got these people here. I'm going to put you on this movie, this show, this show, this show, this show, all while you're here. So I don't got to fly you out multiple times and we could just knock things out nine to five this whole, we're shooting <laughs> nine to nine this thing while you're here. And then, all right, y'all go y'all separate ways. So just so the efficiency of everything was great. And I know on an artistic side, people, you know, don't like to hear about efficiency, logistics, things that sound more scientific. But, you know, to be able to have that creative output, even if you're just relating it to, hey, I want to have my own content that I put out at a higher clip and, you know, um, on TikTok or something. Oh, I'm going to get my setup that makes sense. I create 
some things. I, I batch it because that's all that was, right? Yeah. All right. Or I have a setup that I know I'm going to use every single time. Like those types of things, just getting creative with how you move because there's a level of creativity in business and creating efficiency that I don't think people give credit for. Yeah. Like people aren't doing that or weren't really doing that like that. The fact that he thought of that was a creative thing. Yeah. But hey, shoot, I might as well just have all these people here, keep them there and shack them up and then do five TV shows. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it's five, bro. It makes me think of this one client we had too, uh, Star Ringo. I remember Star Ringo. Yeah. Like I remember having a conversation with him once about his music video output. Um, and he was telling me like, that's how he do it. Like he'll go to, I, I don't want to put out where he lives, but he will go somewhere where he lives, like walk around. He might scout out like four or five locations, like within like, you know, a couple minutes, you know what I'm saying, walking of each other. And just knock out like multiple videos in that area. And I was yeah. like, bro, that's, I mean, he told me that shot. I was like, damn, bro, that's genius. He's like, yeah, bro. He's like, cause I can just like, you know, it might take me four or five hours on his day, but then it's giving me months worth of content, you know what I'm saying, that I can continue working with and building off of. And, you know, time consuming on the front end probably saves a lot of time on the back end, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. so I was like, I thought that shit was genius, bro. And I don't think Tyler Perry gets enough respect as, like, that type of individual, you know what I'm not saying? Not at all. Yeah, like, not at all, bro. And, like, so, yeah. We, the- we literally watched a man go from Chitlin Circuit. I was watching his plays with my grandma and my mom when I was little. Yeah, same. To literally opening a studio Right, a massive studio in Atlanta, billionaire, like all this stuff. Like you don't do that without that genius owning his stuff. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. and I think people talk about because this is one thing I want to talk about when it comes to Tyler. People talk about how cheap Tyler might be, or like how low budget some of the things are, like the wigs or whatever. Oh, yeah. And look, maybe there's room for improvement there. But I think the, I his approach it. comes from somebody who actually owns this shit. Yeah. Right, and moves different. It's different when you build the bag up yourself and I go to the studio and no no slight to anybody who does that because that's how most other people are actually moving like very very few people and we love that you did what you did how you did it 100% some people will navigate the industry and you got to deal with HBO as your first way or Showtime or one of these companies yeah. but the it's different in how you think about the money that's being put out when you're putting it out yourself yeah when show shit right is your shit and you're not just gonna have somebody disappointed that you didn't make the money back. You literally don't have no more no, money. You're gonna, you're gonna feel that shit. <laughs> you're gonna right? feel you're it. You're gonna fail, <laughs> right? You're gonna owe these people, right? I've put on a show before and still had to pay niggas. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you bro. know what I mean? Even though the, the money didn't, like the show didn't profit. Yeah. Like, so yeah. it's a different type of motion and it forces you to get creative. But being independent like that, and having that ownership, it it requires more and thinking more outside the box and paying more attention to the business. But I don't, which I don't think a lot of artists are ready for. They don't know that that's what it comes with, and they just like the romanticism of independent, but they don't want to put in the work in that way. People in general, just like entrepreneurship being sold today, people push the romanticism of entrepreneurship, not understanding the level of work that goes into it because of the level of accountability and responsibility you have mm-hmm. when it's all said and done. It was all you. Like, it's all you. All and you. your life for real depends on it. Where you can work a bad job and you might you might not even get paid as much as you want to, but if that don't work out, you might go get another one or whatever. Or at least you don't have to owe 50, 11 people and pay them out and be bankrupt and all those other things. So yeah. um, you know, like the Tyler Perry thing, every time I hear things like that, it's ins- inspirational to me. Um, and figuring out like how can we bring that into our operation. And now we're at a point of leverage where I think our next phase, we can figure out how to move stuff like that. Um, like move and build things and, and do create faster. Cause to me, that's when it gets even more and more fun, right? As we can create faster, put out, be more creative, but then actually execute on it. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's so much better than, oh, it's a great idea. I'm gonna do this one day, but then you gotta do all these other things. And then shoot, by the time you get there, you forgot about that idea or you got a hundred other ideas and you still gotta pick and still not do a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. So yeah. It, it's cool to, like be working ourselves to move into that space. But, you know, I hope artists understand that th- if you keep on putting in that work or whoever's building that co- the company that you're building, it gets more and more fun as you go once you build up that initial foundation. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's the part that everybody don't make it to. You know, a lot of people don't make it to see how fun it is. Fun and stressful, because we've had the argument before about like how stressful it can be. Right, right, but right. But it is fun, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, and, right, right. And, I like owning shit, and I get Tyler Perry because I'm cheap. So you know what I'm saying. As a fellow 
I guess, cheap <laughs> business owner, bro, I aspire to have that level of frugality with that <laughs> level of a return. That level of frugality with that level of return <laughs> and that level of money. Yeah. Because he still has that with that level of money. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. Bro, shout out to Tyler Perry, bro. Hey, shout out to Tyler Perry, man. And all y'all Northerns, I always got to say this whenever I get a chance, bro. All y'all folks that were shitting on him, man. Fuck y'all. Like, <laughs> because, again, that reflects people in my real life. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm from the South. I got Southern family. And y'all acting like these people don't exist. So we should discount the other black characters. We need the spectrum. Yeah. We need the spectrum. And everybody else gets to show their spectrum. I don't even say everybody else, but we know that there are people who get to show their spectrum, right? Yeah. We we all we need to do is be able to show our spectrum. So that's it. I'm gonna leave it at that in this conversation. I'm Brandman Sean. <laughs> I'm Corey. This is no labels necessary, and we out. Peace. <laughs>